Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. We live in most difficult economic times. Many are out of work. Some are struggling to keep their homes or have lost their homes, while others don't even have a place to live. Or well, maybe they struggle to find some food and uh, a place to let their children grow up in an atmosphere that's conducive to young boys and young girls. But there's some help. There's always some marvelous people who uh, try to take their strengths and their gifts to help the others because we're all brothers and sisters. And we all really, uh, in our faith and love, know that uh, there's a God who blesses us. He calls us blessed. And he calls us blessed because he knows that we can help each other. Even those agencies, though, that can help are suffering a little bit because of the lack of donations and the lack of the gifts that were coming in for them. I have two marvelous beautiful women who are going to represent their own agencies today. <laughs> they work in the Diocese of Trenton, our diocese, that's always uh, got a concern for the poor and for those that are underprivileged. Their agencies are also suffering, though, as I mentioned, from a decline of donations. Many of the cupboards are bare. And, uh, you used to walk in and there'd be stacks of food, and now the food that's there goes out in no time. Sister Joanne Dress is a beautiful daughter of charity was appointed executive director of the newly created Office of Catholic Social Service for our diocese in July 2011. Previously, Sister Joanne served as the chief executive officer of Catholic Charities Community Service of Orange County, New York. As executive director of Catholic Social Services, she now serves as a point of contact between our bishop, David O'Connell, and various agencies in our diocese and initiatives that include Catholic Charities, Migration and Refugee Services, Catholic Relief Services, the Campaign for Human Development, Martin House, Mount Carmel Guild, St. Vincent de Paul Society, Catholic Youth Organization, MRSA, and others that happen to come across our path. Marlene Leo Collins is the Executive Director of Catholic Charities for our diocese. Catholic Charities, as most of you know, we hope you know anyway, is our social service organization that assists more than 100,000 people every year in the four counties of our diocese. Previously, Marlene served as the Director of Social Concerns of the New Jersey Catholic Conference, recommending public policy positions to our Catholic bishops of New Jersey and presenting those church-based concerns to state legislators. Much of Marlene's experience in policy development and advocacy on the state level was attained through a former position with the New Jersey Department of Human Services. And over the years, she collaborated with Catholic Charities and other groups in the ecumenical housing and anti-hunger areas. You know, the work that they do is, it never ends. I was gonna say it's thankless at times, but we know it's not <laughs> thankless because so many people thank them and thank each other. Sister, thanks for being with us. And Marlene, boy, it's, uh, Thank you for having it's me. a pleasure, really, you know. You know Thank you. Um, so many out there are struggling, aren't they? But tell me, uh, how about yourselves and your organizations? How do you see a connection now between this, this economy we're in? And I know it's, a, it's an economy. I mean, some people are doing well. Some people aren't doing well. Some are, some are struggling. Um, families and individuals, you know, trying to seek just their basic needs. How do you, how do you see that, and how is, it, how is it working for you? Richard? <laughs> Monsignor, I think um, one of the greatest things that I've seen, uh, the greatest needs that I've seen and, and difficulties is the unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, in New Jersey, it's almost 10%. It's very high, uh, one of the highest that's in the nation. That's probably 10% that you see. There's, there's a percentage Correct. that you don't see, Correct. I think. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, they really struggle. And uh, the unemployment is, is something that has a domino effect, certainly. Um, you know, if uh, someone's unemployed, they can't pay their bills. Um, and, and so many of these are a new group of people, a new poor that I, I think of, that have been working people their whole lives. And um, they've used their savings, they've lost their jobs, they've used their savings, and they're embarrassed to ask for help. So it's a whole new group of people coming to our doors and asking for assistance. And, uh, and that's on top of the people who are already struggling with low-income positions or no jobs, uh, no benefits. And it's, it's um, just a very difficult time. Um, 
Marlene would I, know. Yeah, I have to agree with question. Sister yeah. Joanne. Um, what we see at Catholic Charities are, um, in regards to the newly uh, poor, uh, we have see a growing number of people who have been unemployed for a year, unemployed for two years. Um, they're embarrassed mm -hmm. to come to Catholic Charities to ask for help because maybe in some cases they've actually contributed to Catholic Charities, the food pantries, and now they're finding themselves in that situation. In fact, um, I heard of a story of someone in the Burlington County area, and um, he and his wife were donors to the food bank in Burlington and found himself unemployed for over a year. So, I mean, some of these are prolonged unemployment and was faced with the challenge of not being able to purchase food for his family and went to the food pantry. And he admitted uh, to our uh, um, counselors that he was embarrassed, but he had no other choice. He's been unemployed for a very long period of time and his wife is, is disabled. Um, it's a shame that, you know, People want to be self-sufficient, and in, especially for those who have for so long helped others, just find it difficult to get go for it and ask help. They shouldn't. They should ask for help, and they should ask for the help as soon as they can, well, early that, on. That's <laughs> a good point, because many are so embarrassed, they, they go through their savings, and they wait until the bills are so high that when they come, it's mm -hmm. difficult, if not impossible to really give them assistance, whether it's their mortgage or their rent or the utility bills, and certainly the food food piece is yeah. another part of it. And uh, they kind of, in my experience, wait uh, on the food is the last thing that they try to access, uh, thinking that they can cut back on that. I think as you, you know, in terms of painting the picture, uh, that's just one example. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of other people who through either Catholic charities or some of the other Catholic social services in the diocese are in the same place. And then you made a comment in, in your, in earlier, that's on top of the poor that had already existed. So it's a challenge, uh, trying time for all of us. So we're seeing some new faces, so to speak, that, uh, that are coming to you or, mm -hmm. or are, are, are in need. I would imagine too that even when some find a job, it might not be at the same level that they Definitely. had before, so it, it's, it's not like, okay, we wait six months and we're going to be okay. There's often a trend that they'll, they'll be hired part-time uh, with no benefits. You know, um, Companies are hurting, so they're only hiring on as much as they uh, can, can use, I suppose, uh, mm -hmm. without doing benefits. So if someone gets sick, you know, that's, that's, that's another whole issue. Um, yeah. I call those complex. I call those the underemployed, right. right? The underemployed. So yeah. they were used to earning a, at a certain level. Um, maybe they're fortunate enough to get a part-time job somewhere. They're not making at the level that they're making, but they still have the mortgage or rent. They still have all those expenses. They dip into their savings. They really try to hang in there for as long as they can because they want to do the right thing. And they figure things are going to turn around. And in other instances, that might have been the case. But this economy is, very, is a really harsh one. It's a tough one. And people are just um, you know, spiraling downward very quickly. And the dignity, the dignity of the human person is so important. Absolutely. You know, and if, you've, if you're raising children or children are in college, I mean, it's, it's so hard for a parent to say, well, we we can't afford it. What we used to do, we can't do. Mm -hmm. Right. I would imagine, I'm just kind of somewhat guessing now, because you, know, you do all the work, mm -hmm. but I would imagine there's even a strain, you know, uh, not just the financial strain, but the relationship strains. Definitely. I mean, all the things that, are, that, that somehow impact each other and impact families and where children can go to school or not go to school and, and those things, and, and health benefits. I, I had a gentleman the other day I was speaking to who, who had lost his job, was out for more than a year. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they, they uh, couldn't pay the mortgage, so they lost the home. And it put so much stress on their family that the family really, you know, split apart. And he, uh, of course, was having difficulty with um, his own dignity and his own sense of himself in terms of being able to provide for his family and to get another job. And I think people um, in their positions, in their jobs, sometimes specialize so much that they they have difficulty kind of transferring their skills to something else. Don't know really how to go about that. But um, 
certainly, you know, I, I think that, and Marlene, you would know mm -hmm. maybe more specifically, I think that some of those stresses on families, uh, some of those stresses on um, substance abuse or some right. of those issues come to the fore when sure. people get so discouraged. Yeah, and I think that's an a excellent point in that, you know, we could talk about the fact that they can't make ends meet or they don't have the money or the resources to purchase food, but there are so many other areas um, that impact the family. And so, you know, this causes the fact that they can't provide for the family and keep up with their bills causes depression. They're embarrassed, anger. You know, uh, sometimes as a result of that, um, they turn sometimes to drugs, substance abuse, alcohol. Um, sometimes um, it causes other issues like domestic violence. Um, and so it does really, it has an impact on the whole family. Um, somebody who's facing a foreclosure uh, or being evicted from an apartment is now going to be homeless. What are they going to do with their children? Their children are going to be uprooted. They're not going to be going to the same school. It, so it causes all kinds of emotional problems. We've seen, in fact, in some of the other programs uh, in our <coughs> agency, an increase. You know, and I don't know whether there's a correlation because I don't have the data, but you can suspect, right? The counselors are saying people are coming to us with these stressors that are being caused through the uh, economic downturn because they've lost their jobs. So they're coming for uh, counseling. Our Providence House Domestic Violence Program has seen an increase. Um, it, it has a, an impact on the entire family and the community as a result of that. And some things that are very basic to us, you know, you, they almost think they can do away with. I'm just thinking of medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have, I mean, some medicine you can't, you can't live without. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet some people start to say, well, I'll save $5 here or whatever it happens to be. And then it starts to impact their own physical health, which then Correct. gets it harder to get a job. So Many of our seniors will skip mm -hmm. or take it every other day or take half and just, um, they, can't, they can't make it. You know what else I worry about? And I don't know if you see this, uh, the younger mm -hmm. folks who maybe go to college, mm -hmm. maybe graduate, but then they can't get a job. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I always said, you know, it seems that they can maybe get something, you know, when you're 20, you're 21, you can, mm -hmm. you got 50 bucks in your, in your pocket, you're kind of okay. But then they grow, they can fall in love with somebody, and you know, and so you're, normally they would have been expected, you know, marriage, mm -hmm. get a home, and so they're struggling with those things, and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then they can't uh, find, find the, the work or the employment. Yeah, I just was reading an article in today's uh, Star Ledger about the challenge that young people are facing and how different it is from the older generation. And so they're going to college, they're incurring this uh, uh, debt, um, and then they're unable to find a job that's gonna be able, and so you, you, you're right on target with that. I mean, in this, the example that they had in the article, he, was, he had a fiance. And so you, you would think that they would want to, you know, get married, and, but they're both laden with college debt that they have to pay, and they're, uh, income is not anywhere near enough to be able to do that. Do you have any idea of the statistics, so to speak, of what, what our needs are and what's happening? Um, yeah, I mean, I can actually, you know, and I'm going to look at my notes because um, there was a survey, and you were talking about the challenge that people have in terms of maybe medicine or, or there was a survey that was done by um, the uh, New Jersey Food Bank Federation. And this was done uh, in 2010. And what they found was, first of all, they determined that there was, has been an increase in the need for emergency services and for the food. And they found that there was an average increase of seven, uh, an average of 7.7% 7 .7 in 2004 to 2006 that were that weren't able to purchase food with their income. And that went up to 11.5%, an average of 11.5% between 2007 and 2009. So there was a really, I think, a, a, a dramatic increase in terms of people not being able to provide adequately for their families. And they went even deeper in their research um, 
they found that 49% of emergency food clients in New Jersey reported having to choose, okay, here's the choices, right, between paying for food or paying utilities or rent or heating fuel. 48% uh, had to make the choice of paying for food or their rent or mortgage, and then 34% um, had to make a choice of whether to pay for food or medicine. And that's, it's the constant trade-off between do I eat, do I keep warm, do I stay where I live, or do I provide the medical needs, you know, take care of myself medically. And uh, another troubling uh, fact is that it has a huge impact on children. 42% of the members of household in New Jersey served by emergency uh, food banks are children under the age of 18. That's, and, and it's, you know, and, and to some extent, it's sad, but it's almost no surprise because um, my, when I was on the school board, there were lots of, in the urban area, there were many children who were coming to school hungry. Hungry, and so, and that's still a problem. I, th I think people, um, in, in my experience, pay a little bit towards all the other things and wait on the food thinking that they may be able to access the pantries. And our pantries do a great job, you know, but they're limited also, you know. Um, in, it may be different um, in, in some of our places, but my experience is that a pantry, if you go to a pantry, you can get two or three days mm -hmm. worth of canned goods or dry goods, but then you can only go back once a month because that's what the community can support. Um, it's, it's very difficult, you know, and in order to do that, to get food for your family, you have to go to multiple pantries. Um, you know, we were down in, mm -hmm. in Burlington County, um, the food uh, bank that you have, Catholic Charities had, plus six or seven other parish pantries, really all were empty. It was flying off the shelves because there were so many mm -hmm. new poor um, coming in addition to the ones that were there before including veterans and, and others, you know. Um. Well, in, in just the month of August, mm -hmm. uh, I was told that just in the month of August in Burlington County, they served 936 fam households in that food bank. In fact, okay. that was the largest amount that they've ever just served. Just your food bank. Just the food bank. the other pantries. Right. There. So, um, so how, how are the parishes and the pantry? What, uh, I, I know that they're asking for more food in, at masses. I mean, people coming to church on Sunday, bringing some food for the, for the poor. Mm -hmm. What else are they doing? How are they struggling? Right? And it must be awful to have somebody call up or knock on the door and say, we don't have anything. Not seeing her. I think they're doing the best they can, really. Uh, uh, many of them have, uh, for instance, a Vincent de Paul Society, where they, they do assist in addition to Catholic Charities and uh, other places like Mount Carmel Guild and all, they do assist with emergency assistance. And that all comes from the parishioners and benefactors who, who are aware that even in areas that you would never suspect in, in our, within our diocese um, uh, that look wealthy, uh, there are people coming and very quietly asking for help behind the scenes. So they do what they can. But it's as, as one pastor said to me the other day, it's, it, it goes very quickly and it's yeah. never enough. You know, but they are helping by doing whatever they can do, uh, whether it's, it's actual money or uh, their time or their skills. Um, they're trying to reach out to help each other, you know, to, to find jobs, yeah. try oh, to find. Yeah. I was going to say, it's not I just the food. Say, it's trying yeah. to find yeah. every the network kind of yeah. with, with employment. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, my experience is I think that there are uh, so many generous people mm -hmm. in this diocese, incredibly generous. We could not do the work that we do at Catholic Charities, and I know for the other Catholic Social Absolutely. Services, without the support of so many um, in the parishes and, th and in the community. I think that sometimes um, um, it's like anything else, marketing. Um, when it comes to hunger, uh, people give during the holidays. They somehow think about it during yeah. Thanksgiving, during Christmas, certain holidays. But uh, we have a saying at Catholic Charity, hunger doesn't go on vacation, you know? It's across the board. So, um, you know, people go on vacation and they're not around. So that's when we see sort of the dips. And with the increase in demand, you know, sometimes we just, we just have to communicate to folks, I think, and we have been, 
that there's a great need. And as a result, there's been a, a good response. I think another thing is that uh, many of these organizations, Catholic Charities um, and, and the others that we mentioned, um, are writing more grants, mm -hmm. trying to get uh, businesses, trying to get foundations to um, kind of help them out with that. And they're very generous, but they too have limits mm -hmm. to how much can True. be given. Um, you know, the, the diocese tries to do whatever we can, you know, uh, but this, this is a very serious time and people are in great need. And there, where there are, um, gov there's government funding mm -hmm. that we depended on, especially in the emergency um, services area that was dramatically cut in, in our diocese and in particular in the Burlington County. So we had um, the uh, USDA uh, food that we relied on for the food pantries uh, was cut I th over 50%. Um, the FEMA money for the food, uh, an emergency program that not only helps uh, with the food, but also would ha uh, was money that we use for helping people with utilities, costs, rents, that was reduced by 46%. So, and this is at the worst time, <laughs> at the worst time to have those cuts. And then, and then we're seeing uh, around the country, mm -hmm. uh, what do I say, little camps set up that are, uh, people living in tents oh, to try to, right. some trying to call attention to, right. to, to the uh, right. poverty that's out there and it creates uh, even a little tension, I guess, on, on different sides. Mm -hmm. How do, you, how do you see you from your own backgrounds and work? I, and I know you spend time and love and prayer. How can we help? How can other people help the folks that are listening to the program? And yet, as you said, there's so many good people that are generous people. What more can we do or how can we do it? Or? I think we can all do something. You know, we yeah. can make a difference in someone's life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think uh, even looking around at your neighbors to see what's needed there to help them. Um, I think one of the things is, is to kind of join together with families coming together or um, parishes or communities trying to collaborate. Um, in some areas, um, different, different, in, um, different faith churches come together and uh, pool their resources and pool their skills and try to help in that way. I think we're always stronger and better when we work together. Absolutely. Um, and working with, with the church and trying to focus what we're doing on real needs and how it will be distributed and mm -hmm. best used. Um, so I think we can, always, we can always do something, whether if not money, our skills, our compassion, our assistance in some way. Yeah, I'd also encourage people not to wait till the bitter end to seek help or assistance. Um, um, reach out to your pastor let them know what the, what the situation is, um, seek the spiritual counseling, look for the financial management courses. In fact, we have a Catholic Charities, a Healthy Families Initiative um, that helps families, couples, you know, address conflicts within their family, uh, financial management uh, courses. So I think that people need to know that, yes, this is a, a very harsh time, economic time, uh, it could be drawn out. Don't wait till the end. Don't use up all your savings and resources before you seek some help and counseling. That's very important for, and for the entire family of you. And I guess yeah. it's good for people to know that it's not their fault, so to speak. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. so that, that some man or woman doesn't think, well, I failed. You know? Exactly. Uh, maybe there are just cycles of, we all fail. We're all, we're all successful and we all fail, but, you know, at, at the same time, so to speak, you know, been helping each other. And because I, I, I always would worry that somebody says, you know, it's, it's my fault. Well, mm. it's, it's not your fault. Mm -mm. It's, it's somehow, uh, but maybe it's, uh, maybe we can all do something to bring it about. What do you think is going to be happening, Sister and, and Marlene? I mean, what, how do you, I know jobs are going out of, out of the country. I'm not a, any expert on any of this, but you know, what do you see? How do you think we're gonna, is it gonna be a gradual coming back or we just help each other create more jobs? Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if you have any thoughts, but I mean, and I'm not an expert either, but I pay attention to what's happening and what people are talking, you know, the talking heads, so to speak. Um, I think it's gonna be a slow process. I don't see anything changing dramatically in the year, next year or two, but it's gonna be a slow process. 
I think that there are some policies um, on a, in the state level and they have to really pay attention to this on a national level, you know, to make sure that jobs are being created. Um, people are moving into from um, being employed by someone to self-employment. There are some opportunities there for, for folks, but um, it's, a, it's gonna be a slow process. So if you have a job, stick with it. <laughs> stick with it, embrace it. Um, if you don't, uh, keep, keep at some, do, continue to do something. Volunteer, get involved, you know, because I think employers are looking at that too. What are you doing even if you're unemployed? Were you involved in something? And so it's really important to kind of get invested in some way, shape, or form. And you know what? Nowadays, everything is computers, 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 but networking, networking is very helpful. <laughs> so they should not stay out of the loop. I, th I think another trend is that people are being very careful with whatever money they do have. Mm -hmm. Certainly, mm -hmm. I hear that in the news as well, you know, mm -hmm. that um, spending, you know, to be careful of what you have, if what you have, you know, if you're still working, um, or even if you're not, just, just to make the the choices that really will help you to um, go the long road. I think you're right. I think people do start to realize that, well, you know, maybe I don't go out and eat five nights a week or whatever, is, whatever happens to them. But on the other hand, I feel, uh, maybe you can comment on this, that there are things we can all do even to keep our, our life and our dignity. If you can't go on a big vacation, well, you know, walk up the canal with a, an apple and a <laughs> whatever, you know, a stay I mean, to, to do stuff. A, a staycation? What is a this thing called? Is that what it's called? A staycation? <laughs> they stay at home and they go out. Do something with the kids. But I think the relationships to, to keep, you know, speaking to the children, to keep speaking to each other, to support each other, to have that sense of hope that, you know. You know, I'm a great believer. I mean, we all are, you know, not only in, in uh, faith, death, and resurrection. You know, and we're living in a, a death time in a way, but there's resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's our hope. Absolutely. I mean, and, and you Amen. can do more. Maybe yes. families will will get together, and maybe they'll play more games mm -hmm. together, or they'll talk to each other more. Or, you know, something's got to be happening that that evolves out so that the the hope yes. comes to to everybody. Mm -hmm. Sister Marlene, thank you so much. I mean, My God bless you. you know, I, I you. can't tell you how how appreciative we all are of the work you do and and the dedication that you have. The Catholic Corner, please help each other, root for each other, eat with each other, share with each other, because you know what? We're all sons and daughters of a God who loves us very, very much. For more information, contact dioceseoftrenton.org. They'll help you as best they can. God Thank you. Thank you.